everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my updated full hotel guide for her latest rerun. In this video, I'll be discussing her kit, attack combos, constellations, artifact builds, weapons, and teams. There's quite a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. Oh, you didn't know? I'm the 77th director of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, Hutao. Hutao is a pyro DPS that excels in single target combat and dealing high reaction damage. By understanding how her kit works, and more importantly, how to effectively play her, we'll be able to bring out her potential and send enemies to the afterlife as quickly as possible. Activating Hu Tao's skill makes her enter the Pyra Mita Papilio state for 9 seconds, and in that duration, Hu Tao's attacks get a Pyro infusion that can't be overridden where you can dish out a ton of Pyro damage and reactions. It also costs 30% of her current HP to cast, which is very thematically in line, and helps in achieving her passive and Homa's effects, which I'll mention later. Furthermore, Hu Tao increases her attack based on a percentage of her max HP at the time it was activated. Her ability to convert HP into attack is primarily why Hu Tao values HP stats more on her artifacts, even though technically speaking, her damage multipliers still scale from her attack stat. Another source of damage is the Blood Blossom Mark, which is applied on an enemy that gets hit with her charged attack during her skill and makes them take pyro damage at certain intervals. Lastly, she gains an increased resistance to interruption. It's not a guarantee she won't be staggered, but it helps a lot. If paired up with another unit that gives resistance to interruption or a dedicated shielder, this practically ensures that Hu Tao will be able to do her attack combos uninterrupted. Speaking of, the most important aspect to learn about Hu Tao's kit is her charged attack mechanics and combos. While her normal attacks have standard internal cooldown or ICD, her charged attack has no ICD. This means that every charged attack hit will apply pyro and the charged attack multiplier is also significantly larger than her normal attacks. And by repeating Hu Tao's charged attacks, you can do large consecutive reaction damage. So doing charged attack combos effectively is the key to unlocking Hu Tao's high damage potential. However, doing charged attacks costs stamina. That's why you'll need to manage Hu Tao's stamina, especially to avoid unexpected stamina issues. There are two bread and butter attack combos to learn and repeat. These are the N1C and N2C combos. N1C simply means that you do one normal attack, then a charged attack, which is the easier combo to execute. On the other hand, there's N2C, which is two normal attacks, then a charged attack. This combo is more difficult to execute, but applies more pyro from her normal attacks, which can add to her reaction damage. As the shorter combo, you'll be able to fit more N1Cs than N2Cs in Hu Tao's 9 second window, which also means repeating N1Cs can consume more stamina. The damage difference between the two is quite small, so choosing between them depends largely on your preference and ease of execution. Along with attack combos, the next step is animation cancelling. Without cancelling, you can still technically squeeze in a lot of charge attacks with good timing. However, there are notable benefits for implementing cancels to maximize Hu Tao's potential. To start, since her charge attack makes her dash forward and phase through some enemies, this can potentially launch her too far away from targets, making it harder to reach them and leaving you in a bad combat position. Cancelling can then give you better control of Hu Tao's positioning, which leads to better gameplay. Although, there are some enemies who won't let her face through, like Ruin Guards, thus reducing the need for position control. Hu Tao's animation cancelling is done by either jumping or dashing. Let's discuss their differences and added benefits. Jump cancelling is done by jumping right after her charged attack connects. A perfect jump cancel can even stop you from phasing through the enemy. Jumping requires no stamina, making it more beneficial for reducing stamina consumption. However, this can leave you vulnerable against enemy attacks while in mid-air, and it also keeps you in place until she lands. On the other hand, dash cancelling is done by dashing right after her charged attack connects. This is faster than jump cancelling, gives her iframes to avoid attacks, and lets you choose a direction to reposition as needed, which are all great advantages over jump cancelling. However, dashing also requires stamina, and if you combine that with her charged attack stamina cost, this will really burn through your stamina if repeated. While spamming dash cancels can let you execute more combos, it's more recommended to spam dashes if you have C1 to avoid severe stamina drain issues. Note as well that it's not completely necessary to stick with either exclusively jump or dash cancelling in one rotation, as you can switch between them as the situation calls for it. In fact, to better execute Hu Tao's N1C, you may want to alternate between jumping and dashing because of the dash cooldown mechanic. 
Dash cooldown is why you can only dash twice in a row but not thrice, because the game imposes a cooldown interval for consecutive dashes. If you dash cancel two N1Cs in a row quickly enough, you'll notice that Hu Tao won't be able to dash for the third N1C. For that, you can jump cancel instead, leading to this combo of two N1C dash plus an N1C jump which you can then repeat. In one rotation, you can fit an average of about 8 N1Cs or 7 N2Cs at C0. Going higher with C0 requires more frame-perfect timing and reflexes, but having C1 can make it easier to do more with dash cancels. The difficulty of these combos can vary from player to player. As you get more gameplay experience with Hu Tao, these things should eventually become more second nature for a seasoned Hu Tao player. That's the bulk of Hu Tao's most complex mechanics, so now let's go over her burst and passives, which are thankfully quite simple. Starting with her burst, casting it deals an instance of AoE pyro damage around her. It also heals Hu Tao per enemy hit. The healing amount is based on her max HP, and this can stack up to 5 times. Additionally, the damage and healing will be increased if Hu Tao's HP is equal to or below 50%. Hu Tao's burst is not necessary to use every rotation, so it's up to you if you want to treat it as a regular source of damage or as an emergency healing measure. Either way, it ought to be used right before her skill state expires so that her burst damage still uses the attack buff. One way to ensure that her burst retains the skill's attack buff is by doing it in the middle of her last charged attack. This is because the skill won't end as long as she's in the middle of her attack animation. So in your last charged attack, instead of jump or dash cancelling it, let her slide and cast her burst. Her first ascension passive gives everyone else in the team a 12% crit rate buff for 8 seconds when her skill ends. It's a small but welcome buff to help her teammates while rotating their abilities. Then her fourth ascension passive gives Hu Tao a 33% damage bonus as long as her HP is equal to or below 50%. This can be achieved by using her skill at least twice without healing, or if you eventually take enough damage. While Hu Tao technically doesn't need to keep this active to do a lot of damage, the damage bonus is still fairly considerable and more damage. So it introduces an incentive to keep her at low health, but it's up to you and her team on how consistently this buff will be active. For her talent levels, prioritize her normal attack and skill as these constitute the bulk of her damage sources. Then you can level up the burst according to your preference. Only once you know and respect death can you truly understand the value of life. Now let's go over what her constellations add. C1 is her most valuable and biggest quality of life upgrade constellation. The effect simply makes her charged attacks cost zero stamina, but that leads to noticeable improvements in gameplay experience and damage. The most apparent benefit is that you can now do dash cancels more frequently and worry less about her stamina consumption. And since dashing is a faster canceling method, you can then increase the number of charged attacks in one rotation. By being able to dash more often, this also lets you have more iframes, which lets Hu Tao dodge enemy attacks more often. If your stamina also happens to be low from dashing too much before going into Hu Tao's on-field time, C1 also ensures that you can still do stamina-free charged attacks even with little to no stamina, and resort to mostly jump cancelling instead. While C1 is a very beneficial early constellation, I want to emphasize that it's not necessary to play Hu Tao well and it's still very doable to make her manageable at C0. But if you're dedicated to building Hu Tao, getting C1 is a really nice addition for vertically investing in her potential. C2 increases the damage of her Blood Blossom and now makes her burst apply it to enemies, allowing it to last longer after she leaves the field. This is a relatively minor overall damage increase though, and won't be fully felt if you don't use her burst regularly. C3 increases her skill level by 3, which means more attack conversion and Blood Blossom damage. C4 gives Hu Tao's teammates a 12% crit rate buff for 15 seconds if a Blood Blossom marked enemy is defeated. However, if Hu Tao's up against a single boss, especially in Spiral Abyss, then C4 will practically be useless. So this constellation is only ever useful if she's fighting at least two enemies. C5 increases her burst level by 3. And finally, C6 makes it so that once her HP falls below a certain point, or if she takes a lethal hit, she can survive and then gets an additional 100% crit rate plus increased resistance to interruption and damage. With this, it becomes less necessary to build high crit rate on her. Just stack crit damage and other important stats instead, and you can speedrun whatever you need to defeat. <sighs> I gotta find something fun to do. Sitting around doing nothing is a fate worse than death. Now onto her build. Let's start by discussing her artifact stats. 
The question many ask is if it's better to run an HP or EM Sans on Hu Tao, both of which are generally viable. Simply put, an EM Sans will output more reaction damage if Hu Tao isn't already getting EM buffs from teammates. However, HP Sans are more common than EM, while also adding more survivability, and it performs better if Hu Tao already gets EM buffs from teammates. It depends on various scenarios, but in general, you can just stick to either one you already have, Preferably with good substats, or if you have both, use the one with significantly better substats. Then aim for a pyro damage goblet and a crit circlet that will get her closer to a good crit ratio. As for substats, prioritize crit, EM, and HP with attack as the lowest priority. A good target for Hu Tao's total EM is 200 to 300 EM before factoring in teammate buffs. And as for ER, Hu Tao generally doesn't need it. Next, let's cover the best artifact sets for Hu Tao. The 4-piece Crimson Witch gives her added pyro damage and reaction damage bonuses. While she's unable to fully stack the 4-piece effect, the other bonuses are still enough to make it a top set. It's also now strong boxable, making it more accessible than before. Next is 4-piece Shimanawa, which gives a huge damage bonus for normal attacks and charged attacks at the cost of energy. While it gives a huge damage boost, she may not have an emergency healing burst ready due to the energy drained, but farming it is resin efficient since it's with the emblem set, which is very sought after, particularly for some of Hutao's teammates. The difference between Crimson Witch and Shimanawa is quite small and can situationally favor one over the other. Use whichever good set you acquire first, or use the Genshin Optimizer app if you really want to min-max between them. The 4-piece Gilded Dreams is another viable full set. It's efficient if you're farming the Deepwood Gilded domain anyway for your Dendro units or other DPSs that also like Gilded. However, it scales worse with external EM buffs since the set already gives a lot of EM innately, causing EM to overstack and give diminishing returns. Still, 2-piece combos of Crimson Witch, Tenacity, or EM sets are very viable on her as well. And if you have better substats on them compared to full sets, 2-piece combos will still end up being very competitive. Competitive. The 4-piece Bolide set can work for her when paired with a shielder, but the aforementioned sets and combos are overall better options. Death is a constant for all among the multitudes that sit beneath the heavens. Now let's go through her best weapons in every bracket. The best 3-star and free-to-play choice for Hu Tao is the White Tassel, which gives crit rate and a normal attack damage bonus. It has a low base attack, but Hu Tao doesn't mind as much. It also prefers N2C combos to maximize its passive. However, you can only find this in Liyue chests. Then for 4-star weapons, if you don't have the White Tassel or any other recommended 4-star, the Missive Windspear, a recent free event weapon, is an option. Dragonsbane gives a high EM stat and damage bonus that in Vaporized teams will have high uptime. With this, you won't have to build much EM from Hu Tao's artifacts anymore, and it's likely you will be able to refine it over time too. The deathmatch comes from the battle pass, but just having one refinement is already enough for Hu Tao since you mainly want it for the crit rate substat. Its particular advantage over Dragon's Bane is that deathmatch scales better with external buffs like EM or damage bonuses. The Lithic Spear also becomes very good with refinements and with 3-4 stacks, meaning you have a Lyria-centric team. Thankfully, a number of Hu Tao's best teams fulfill that criteria. Then for 5 stars, the Staff of Homa is her best in slot. It gives HP, a lot of crit damage, an attack bonus based on max HP, and adds more incentive to lower Hu Tao's HP which synergizes with her kit. The Staff of Scarlet Sands has a high crit rate stat which is very valuable, and since Hu Tao is often built with a considerable amount of EM, she can make good use of its passive. Although activating Hu Tao's skill does not proc its passive effect, it can still be procced by her Blood Blossom which counts as skill damage. The damage difference between this and Homa is quite small, so if you already have it, don't be pressured to get Homa. Lastly, the Jade Spear performs similarly to her best 4-star options, so if you happen to accidentally get this and have no other options, you can just give this to her. One client, two clients, three clients. Finally, it's time to cover Hu Tao's best teams and party members, which are very important in bringing out Hu Tao's full potential. In general, her teammates revolve around ensuring that she can do a lot of damage during her on-field time. These would be 1. Off-field damage dealers, 2. Elemental applicators to set up reactions, 3. Support buffers for further boosting damage, and 4. Survival options like shielders or healers as needed. Let's go through the different teams she can fit in. 
The first and most important core for Hu Tao is a vaporized based comp. Since this really needs fast hydro application to keep up and allow consistent reactions, the top teammate recommendation is Sing Cho. He primarily provides high hydro application to reliably set up reactions while also doing great single target damage. But more than offense, Singcho gives valuable survival utilities. His resistance to interruption buff is very helpful if you're not running Hu Tao with a shielder. His damage reduction buff ensures that your Hu Tao won't lose HP too fast. And his small healing buff helps you manage your Hu Tao's HP, especially in trying to keep it not too low but not too high either. Simply put, they have perfect synergy. And if you really want to maximize Hu Tao, Singcho is practically a must build and is more than enough to function even as a solo hydra applicator for Hu Tao. Yelan is a similar unit that can also provide off-field hydro application and single target damage with her burst, and she has a passive buff that lets Hu Tao get an increasing damage bonus over time. However, Yelan's hydro application alone before C2 isn't as good as Sing Cho's hydro application. At C0, although Yelan can generally keep up with Hu Tao's vapes, certain circumstances of extra elemental applications that interfere with Yelan's hydro, such as bad blood blossom timing, Toma's burst, a crystallized reaction, or other external elements could deplete her hydro aura and cause you to miss some Hu Tao vapes. Yelan also lacks the survival utility of Sing Cho, so there are some trade-offs to making Yelan the solo hydro applicator for Hu Tao. Instead, the best way to use Yelan with Hu Tao is to pair her with Sing Cho, creating the very strong double hydro core. This combo has unbelievably good synergy with Hu Tao. Hydro Resonance gives an HP bonus which they all benefit from, Sing Cho and Yelan add so much more single target damage, and this practically takes care of all the hydro application Hu Tao needs. It's definitely one of Hu Tao's best team comps. One more honorable mention for a Hydro teammate is Mona because you can make Mona hold a Thrilling Tales and even Noblesse set to buff Hu Tao's attack. And most of all, Mona increases your team's damage from her Omen buff. It's even better if she's at C1 for the added Vaporize damage bonus. Once you have your Vaporize core, you can add different elements to transform it into various reaction teams. Adding in off-field cryo units will turn the team into a combination of Vaporize and Melt. Hu Tao will be able to proc some Melt reactions on enemies with the cryo aura or that are frozen. If you add in an Electro unit, this will make the team a combination of Electro Charged, Vaporize, and Overload reactions. Triggering Electro Charge makes the Hydro and Electro auras coexist, so Hu Tao will trigger a combination of Vaporizes and Overloads. Just note that this is best used against large and heavy enemies since overload can cause too much knockback against light enemies. Fischl will be a very good choice for the Electro slot, though other off-field Electros will also work to some extent. Then there's the option to add another Pyro unit, and the main reason you'd want to do so is because you're also adding an animal unit equipped with Viridescent Venerer to swirl Pyro and shred Pyro resistance before Hu Tao takes the field. Without a second Pyro, your rotation won't be feasible for swirling Pyro. Toma and a C4 Yanfei can act as shielders for Hu Tao. Since Toma's pyro application is pretty slow, he's unlikely to steal vaporizes from Hu Tao, if at all. Sin Yan also works as a shielder, though she's a worse option compared to Toma or Yanfei. Amber can also be a really good Hu Tao support. Her burst applies pyro really fast in a short amount of time, making it much easier to swirl pyro on the enemy. And if equipped with an Elegy of the End bow and or an Instructor artifact set, she's able to give a huge buff to Hu Tao's damage. Bennett is also a good option. While Hu Tao won't be able to use her low health buffs much, Bennett still provides a huge attack buff, and more so gives a pyro damage bonus if at C6, which results in an overall net gain for Hu Tao's damage. Another option for a second pyro is to pair Hu Tao and Shangling with the Sing Cho Yelan combo. This team is dubbed as Funerational as a play on Funeral and National, and it's a very strong team where Shangling fills in the role of dealing single target and AoE pyro damage. The double hydro core also ensures there's enough hydro application for both pyro DPSs. For VV equipped animal units, you can put in healers like Sayu or Jean if you need the healing. But if you want a damage boost, Sucrose or Kazuha, who give an EM and damage bonus buff respectively, are your best options. While they generally want to swirl Pyro, they can also be used to swirl other elements, particularly if you don't have a second Pyro. It won't directly buff Hu Tao's damage, but it's still a resistance shred other teammates can take advantage of, like in a double hydro comp. You can also infuse Sucrose or Kazuha's bursts to be another source of elemental application. 
In Double Geo, Albedo and Zhongli form a very good defensive core for Hu Tao. Aside from the Geo Resonance, Zhongli's shield ensures you can control Hu Tao's HP while also shredding enemy resistance. Albedo provides constant off-field AoE Geo damage and his burst gives an EM buff. While this team's DPS ceiling is lower compared to Hu Tao's previous team options, it makes up in terms of comfort and survivability. To some extent, you can also slot in Yunjin. But since she only buffs normal attack damage, you'll want to use Hu Tao's N2C combo instead to take better advantage of Yunjin's buff. If you'd rather go full arson, Hu Tao can slot in a mono pyro team with Shang Ling. Then it's best to add Bennett and include a VV animal unit. Unless you're triggering a reaction on an enemy with an innate elemental aura, EM won't do anything for this team since there are no reactions to set up besides Swirl. We have one last team from Dendro, which is Burjun Hu Tao. It's a very niche and least recommended playstyle, but it can be amusing to see in action. You'll need Dendro and Hydro units to generate Dendro cores, but it's important that you have lots of Hydro application to stop burning and maintain Bloom procs, and the recommended way to do this is with two Hydro units. It's also vital to have healing or shielding since Burjun's self-damage can easily kill Hu Tao. Hu Tao's pyro infusion lets her trigger Burjun on the cores, and she can just spam normal attacks so there's no need for animation cancelling tricks anymore. And as a final note for team building, you can also equip supports or flex units with these artifact sets to better buff or complement the team while the off-field damage dealers can generally keep their damage-focused builds. And that's it for this Hu Tao guide. She can demand more from the player, but if you're willing to put in the work, she can definitely be a rewarding investment and a top-tier DPS. Let me know in the comments if you're a first-time Hu Tao haver or a Hu Tao veteran. And if this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you all soon. Take care! Who as in, who put me in this coffin? And Tao as in, I can't get Tao!